Hi, John, you've upgraded your commodity price assumptions. Can you tell me what the changes are? Yeah, James, well, the main one is we've increased our near-term iron ore uh, prices just because near-term futures have gone up materially recently, and that's basically due to strong Chinese steel production. Um, we also increased our copper price, both near-term and also our mid-cycle or long-term assumed price. Um, we just think that inflation is pushing up and steepening the cost curve. And there's also been supply issues in various mines around the world. So we, we see long-term copper prices being higher than we previously assumed. Um, other than that, we pushed up gold um, and probably the other big change is uh, thermal coal prices, which have been very volatile, have come down a bit. Okay. What are your favourite and least favourite commodities going forwards? So probably my favourite is gold. Um, Gold is, is the gold prices are still fairly high compared to historical values, but the gold mines themselves have been really affected by worries over interest rates. And look, more recently we've had um, expectations that the central banks have reached peak interest rates. Um, and so they've been benefiting from that expectation a bit, but they're really still undervalued in our view. Um, as, to, as to my least favourite, well, I'd probably have to go iron ore. I mean, iron, iron ore prices are really strong, um, but we think over the longer term they'll, they'll come down fairly materially. What are the biggest risks, upside and downside, for commodities this year? Well, when it comes to commodities, you've got to worry about what's happening in China because it's the biggest source of demand for most commodities. So um, in terms of upside risks, um, if, if the Chinese government uh, increases stimulus, which it hasn't really done, unlike most times when the economy over there has been slower than they hoped, um, then that should help commodity demand, whether it's iron ore, copper, what have you. And also, look, uh, Chinese uh, property sector is, has been struggling and is still struggling. And so if, they, if, the, if the government increases support for the property sector over there, then we think that'll flow through to iron ore and to a lesser extent copper prices as well. Um, as, as, for, as for downside risks, well, probably, probably interest rates in the West um, remaining higher than uh, everyone currently expects. Um, there's the, probably the consensus now is that uh, we're, we're close to, if not at, peak interest rates, um, and that we'll probably see some interest rate reductions, um, which, if so, will flow through to higher, higher economic growth and stronger industrial production, which is bullish for commodities. But look, if inflation stays higher than the Federal Reserve in the US in particular then, well, expects, then um, we may see higher interest rates uh, for longer. What are your top picks among the mining stocks? Well, I guess my first one is Newmont, which is the world's biggest gold miner uh, for reasons I've, I mentioned earlier in terms of the gold price. But it's also just taken over uh, Aussie, <clears throat> or formerly Aussie listed Newcrest. Um, and so it's, it's, it's um, currently digesting Newcrest. Um, it's, it's really been underperforming in terms of production over the past nine months to, to a year. And that's flown through to higher costs and lower margins. But we think sooner or later, They'll, um, they'll get their act together and production should increase to closer to where it should be. And that should lead to higher margins and, and hopefully, well, high, higher earnings and hopefully a higher share price. Um, the other one I would, I would mention is Whitehaven. So an Aussie thermal coal miner that's also just bought uh, two of BHP's metallurgical coal mines. Um, it remains materially undervalued, um, we think, because a lot of investors don't like being exposed to coal.